The last time I decided I was smarter than my doctor and thus prescribed myself an antibiotic treatment. I ended up on a hospital bed with a terrible headache, an uncontrollable stomach ache, and an intravenous drip on my forearm. You idiot, my mother said. You practically destroyed all of your necessary life-enabling bacteria. As you can guess, this observation was not unique to my mother. And, though inadvertently, she summarized the two most important features of antibiotic overuse. First, its dreadful consequences for your health, and second, the fact that it is a social phenomenon. Antibiotics revolutionized medicine with their ability to eradicate pernicious bacteria from one's body, and hence, cure infections. Nevertheless, the misuse or overuse of these medications can lead to diseases such as the one described above, or to the formation of superbugs that can withstand any antibiotic treatment. Apparently, the solution to this issue is simple. Stop consuming antibiotics. Yet, the lack of regulation and the social normalization of antibiotic use made the consumption of this medicine extensive and may eventually lead us to a miserable pre-antibiotic era. If a country has a sufficient supply of antibiotics, then it is probably struggling with the misuse of these drugs or has a set of laws that attempt to regulate their overuse. These laws are often inexistent or vary in degree, intrusiveness, and quantity. But the failure of nations when it comes to limiting this behavior is a worldwide phenomenon. For instance, according to NCBI expert Lee Ventola, from 2000 to 2010, the world consumption of antibiotics increased by 35%. Certainly, this upward trend entails that countries around the world are not efficiently limiting the spread, prescription, and overuse of these medications. However, surprisingly, 76% of this 35% increase can be attributed to five countries in particular. Brazil, Russia, India, China, and South Africa, which coincidentally also fulfilled the two requirements for a substantive overuse of antibiotics. A sufficient, a sufficient supply and the over-the-counter retail of these drugs. Although this trend can be attributed to an improvement in healthcare access, this explanation is not enough to account for this huge increment. In simpler terms, antibiotic misuse is more commonly associated with countries that have flexible regulations for the purchase of this medicine. In essence, the, ca the causation is straightforward. The lack of boundaries in an area where limitations might disincentivize undesirable conducts encourages or facilitates the incorrect prescription of antibiotics. The constant use of these drugs and the permissiveness of experts. For example, antibiotics are an over-the-counter drug in Colombia. Thus, the lack of regulation has the two rising costs for the Colombian government which currently pays $242 billion in antibiotic overuse cases for its subsidized citizens. For this example, it is crucial to note that an increase in subsidized medical costs implies an increasing number of antibiotic overuse cases, and therefore suge suggests that minimal regulations lead to the overuse of these medications. Since laws are created as a response to pre-existing social conditions, the regulations, the regulations that limit the consumption of antibiotics must be attempting to offset the social factors that cause this issue. Then, what are the social factors that lead to this phenomenon? Negative externalities, doctor-patient relationships, and ignorance are the three risk factors that are normalizing and proliferating the use of antibiotics. An externality is a consequence that is produced by someone who does not receive the direct impacts of the action. In effect, the overconsumption of antibiotics can be considered an externality, which doctors and patients are willing to undertake because, as the McDonald's Norms Group points out, the action and undesirable consequence are so widely separated in time that the relationship is unrecognized or unacknowledged. Nonetheless, this recklessness and carelessness that allows individuals to undermine the health of the overall society has a major root in a less economic concept. Ignorance 
or lack of awareness. The question is, how can individuals be expected to suppress their self-interest when they ignore the basic implications of the matter? In other words, if someone does not know that the misuse of antibiotics may lead to superbugs or harmful disease, then she will probably guide her decision on her self-interest and the almost folkloric belief that antibiotics can cure anything. Now, for antibiotic, for antibiotic ignorance to be a trend, a significant portion of that population has to suffer it. According to a survey we conducted with the students of Colegio Bolívar, 55% of the people surveyed did not know the possible consequences of antibiotic overuse. Despite the small sample size and the probable measuring errors, this number is still relevant enough to suggest that there is a relative ignorance in the population with regards to the effects of this phenomenon. Hence, the ignorance evinced by the phrase antibiotics can cure anything can be classified as a possible cause for the normalization of antibiotic overconsumption. Ultimately, the incentive scheme involving the doctor-patient relationship is creating a situation in which inappropriate prescribing has become the norm. In short, the doctor-patient relationship consists of a trade-off where the doctor receives recognition and the patient perceives he was adequately treated. This trade-off encourages antibiotic prescription because with this event, the patient concludes, who concludes his, his sickness has been acknowledged and is being treated. And thus, the doctor ensures that his work is appreciated. Sadly, the social norms that often yield favorable relations are creating, in this context, a detrimental precedent that normalizes antibiotic consumption by portraying it as routine-like. In sum, all of these societal factors converge into one ever-growing snowball of antibiotic overuse, which in turn produces drug-resistant bacteria at a faster rate. Since ordinary bacteria, since ordinary antibiotics eliminate ordinary bacteria but not superbugs, the overuse of this medication enables the latter to survive and pass its drug-resistant genes to its offspring, henceforth permitting them to multiply their kind. Ultimately, unfortunately, this natural selection process is exacerbated as the number of reckless consumers increases. Likewise, it is important to understand that resistance is also developed naturally. In fact, microbes effortlessly evolve and adapt to their environment due to their, due to, due to their genetic plasticity and rapid replication. It takes bacteria 20 to 30 minutes to replicate. This ability makes, makes it easy for microbes to, to evolve and become each time more resistant. Moreover, when scientist Leventhal affirms antibiotic development is no longer considered to be an economically wise investment for the pharmaceutical industry, he's simply listing a fact that discourages companies from creating new, more effective antibiotics. The data from the Center for Disease Control and Prevention demonstrates that the number of antibiotics created and approved in the US has decreased from 33 approvals between 1985 and 2000 to just 13 be approvals between 2000 and 2014. Therefore, the increasing misuse of antibiotics and the decreasing creation of new antibiotics that cannot set a resistance crisis are creating a perfect storm, which Dr. Brad Spellberg asserts can mean a literal return to the pre-antibiotic pre era for many types of infections. Although some experts may be right when criticizing this conclusion as an unrealistic doomsday scenario, they cannot deny that the resistant crisis can have upsetting implications for modern medicine. If the social and pharmaceutical response to this issue continues to be postponed, then in a few years, the medical field might face an ever-growing number of cases that cannot be treated with the current spectrum of antibiotics, or might have to deal with a cyclical multiplier effect in which the use of antibiotics cannot be halted, and thus, superbox continue to evolve. In conclusion, the anecdote from the beginning is not an attempt to charismatically capture the attention of the reader, but a true example where, society, where societal forces and the leniency of the law converge to express themselves as the overconsumption of antibiotics. This example is the equivalent of one drop of water in the world's oceans, 
since there are millions and millions of similar cases which combine to produce drug-resistant bacteria that threaten a return to a pre-antibiotic era. The fact that scientists considered the previous sentence to be a possibility should be enough to instigate a response that attempts to counter antibiotic resistance. The reaction has been ignorable, however. The solution to this issue should be a burden of the collective, not just an obligation of scientists and legis legislators. The solution to this issue lies in the hands of every patient and doctor who breaks the cycle of overconsumption. The solution of this issue must be based on encouraging self-control and awareness. The solution of this issue is conceivable and must be set in motion right now. Thank you.